Hey, God bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video. I know that God is going to speak to your life. So this is going to be the theme of the video. You've sinned, now what? So pay attention because we're going to talk about two things in this video. The first thing we're going to talk about is what you should do after you've sinned and what God will do after you've sinned. So watch this video. It's going to be a blessing to your life. You've sinned, now what? So remember, what's the question? You've sinned, now what? And I want to read you something out the book of John chapter 13, verse 6 through 10. This is that famous story of when Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples. And the Bible says that he gets to Peter. It's Peter's turn to wash his feet. And look what Peter tells Jesus. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Peter, in other words, was telling him like, nah, Jesus, you're not going to wash my feet, you know, because Peter respected Jesus and he saw that like as a humbling job. But look what Jesus tells Peter. Jesus answered him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. So Peter's like, nah, Jesus, you're not going to wash my feet. See, Peter doesn't understand what this symbolizes. Peter's just thinking that this is like a way that Jesus is going to be humbled. But Peter really doesn't understand that Jesus washing his feet represents something much greater. And look what Jesus tells Peter when he says like, nah, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who has been bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. You are clean. So look what he tells Peter. He's like, Peter, you don't understand now, but you're going to understand later because he knew that the Holy Spirit was going to reveal to Peter after his crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus knew that the Holy Spirit was going to reveal to Peter what the washing of the feet represented. Peter's like, nah, you're not going to wash my feet. He says, if I don't wash your feet, you can't have any part of me. You can't be my disciple. And then Peter tries to go the extra mile. Remember, Peter doesn't see the symbol of what washing of the feet represent yet. He thinks it's just the way that Jesus is going to humble himself. He says, well, then wash my hands and my head also. Jesus is like, no, Peter, you've already been washed completely. I only need to wash your feet. You are already clean. Do you know what Jesus was telling Peter? You are already clean. Because the Bible says that by the words of Jesus, Jesus made the disciples clean with his words. I want to tell you, Jesus has already made you clean through what he did for you on the cross. See, when you receive Jesus Christ, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came into your life to dwell within you. And the Bible says that you have been born again. You are a new creation. You've been washed by the word of God. You've been washed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ. So what does it represent Jesus washing the feet of his disciples? If he already told them they're clean, he needs to only wash their feet. Look at this. You walk on the paths of life with your feet. When Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples, it's a representation of their day to day lives. In other words, you're already clean, but every single day you're walking, you're living, you're living in this world. Some dirt might stick to your feet. What does this dirt represent? It represents a sin. It represents a failure. He says, you're living in this life. You still have a sinful nature. You already washed. You're already clean. You're saved because of what I did for you on the cross. But while you're living this life, sometimes your feet might get dirty. And what is Jesus telling Peter? Let me wash your feet. In other words, let me cleanse you. Let me wash you. So what should believers do when they come to the realization that they've sinned against God? Approach him. Don't run from him. Approach God. Approach the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says that they hit themselves. No, no, no. You don't need to do that. I know that condemnation can come and I know that the lies of the devil can make you feel unworthy. But no, that is a lie. You are washed and cleansed by what Jesus did for you on the cross. So if you come to the realization that you've sinned against God, approach him because he has the water to cleanse you and to wash you. He wants to cleanse you and wash you of any sin, of any iniquity. So look at this. When we approach God, that's something that the Bible calls repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is a turning away from your sin. In other words, when you come to the realization that you sinned against God and you repent, in other words, you recognize that is wrong. God does not approve that. A Christian shouldn't live like that. A Christian shouldn't practice that. 
Once you come to that realization and you approach God, that's called repentance. Why? Because you're turning away from the sin and you're approaching the Lord. And what does he want to do? He wants to wash you. He wants to cleanse you. And let me read you some scriptures that teaches this a little better. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16 through 20. We're talking about what God will do when we repent. Remember, what does the washing of the feet represent? It represents how Jesus Christ wants to wash us every single day. Because the disciples were walking around every day and their feet were getting dirty every day. And Jesus said, let me wash your feet. You don't understand now, but you're going to understand later. I want to tell you the same thing. Every single day, you might come to a realization that you failed God or that you sinned against the Lord. What do you need to do? Don't walk away and don't hide yourself, seclude yourself from the Lord. Approach him. He wants to wash you and he wants to cleanse you. Look what the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 16 through 20. Look how God wants to wash you and cleanse you. Pay attention because I know that this verse is going to bless your life. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before your eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So look what Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16 through 20 says. God is speaking to the people through the prophet Isaiah and he tells them, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. What did I just finish saying? When Jesus washes the feet of the disciples, it represents how Jesus wants to wash you every single day. All you need to do is approach him and repent. God is telling the people through the prophet Isaiah, wash yourselves. We already know how to do that. How do we do it? When we approach the Lord, when we repent in the name of Jesus. And he's telling them this, though your sins are red as crimson, I'll make them white as wool. Though your sins are red as scarlet, I shall make them white as snow. He says, come, let us reason together. In other words, look, there's no sin that I won't forgive. There's no error that I won't clean you from. God is literally telling his people, if you want to be clean, I will make you clean. God is telling you, looking at this video right now, if you want to be clean, God can make you clean. Let's keep reading. It only gets better. Look what else the Bible keeps saying. Psalms chapter 32, 1 through 6. Look what David tells the people. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Through what Jesus did on the cross for you, your sins are covered. Your sins are buried. When he was buried, your sins were buried. Look what else the Bible says. Blessed is the one against who the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. God doesn't count your sins against you. All you need to do is have a spirit that there's no deceit. What does that represent? That you approach God, that you repent. If you repent, God will wash you. He will cleanse you. He will purify you. He won't count your sins against you. Look what does the Bible keep saying. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. But I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Look what David says. Blessed is the one who God counts no sin against them. Blessed is the one who God does not hold their iniquities against them, whose sins are covered. And then David gives us a personal experience. He says, look, it's not worth it. Why are you going to hang on to an unconfessed, unrepented sin? David says, when I didn't repent of my sins, David is saying, my bones wasted away all the day long. I felt oppressed. I felt sad. I felt miserable. I felt horrible. He said, but the moment that I confessed my sins, my joy came back to me. My strength came back to me. And you forgave all my sins. So listen to the advice of King David. He said, look, when I sin, I confess my sins to you, God, and you forgave me. Isaiah tells us, come, let us reason. It doesn't matter if your sins are like crimson or like scarlet. He will make them white as wool. He will make them white as snow. Jesus told his disciples, let me wash your feet. You don't understand now, but what do we know that this means now? It means that he wants to daily wash us because every single day our feet might get a little dirty. What does that feet represent in the life of a Christian? It represents your day-to-day -day life. Every single day, you might come to the realization or the knowledge that you've sinned against God. What do you need to do? Approach the Lord. He wants to wash you. He wants to cleanse you. Listen to the advice of David. He said, when I confess my sins, you forgave me, Lord. Let's keep reading. I want to read you one more scripture. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 15 and 16. Look what the Bible says. Lie not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home. So look at this. 
God knows that there's a lot of people that always like to point the finger at Christians. But look what God is telling these people. He says, hey, don't stand outside the door of a righteous person waiting to point the finger at them. And look what he says about the righteous person. For the righteous falls seven times and rises again. So look what the Bible says. The Bible says, don't stand outside the house of the righteous because the righteous will fall seven times, but they shall rise again. I want to tell you, because of what Jesus did for you on the cross, you shall rise again. And we've already learned the steps. What do we need to do? What do you need to do when you come to the realization that you sinned against God? Approach him. Repent. He wants to wash you. He wants to cleanse you. He says it doesn't matter if it's red like crimson. If it's like scarlet, he'll make it like snow. He'll make it like wool. He says this, King David, while I didn't confess my sins, he said I wasted away. He said, but the moment I repented, he says you forgave my iniquity. That's what you need to do. Repent. Jesus will wash you. It doesn't matter if it's red like crimson or red like scarlet. He'll purify you. He'll make you white as wool. It doesn't matter if you confess your sins the same way he forgave David. He'll forgive you. And the Bible says you're righteous. You might fall seven times, but you shall rise again. All you need to do is keep trusting the Lord. Put your faith in him. He's called you and he's faithful to finish the good work that he started in you. Hey, God bless you. I hope this video blessed your life. If it did, do me a favor. Press that like button. The more people that press the like button, the more people this video will reach. So if you want this video to reach people, press the like button, leave a comment. And also, if you're not subscribed, subscribe and press that bell notification. I post two videos a week and I don't want you to miss any because I know that they'll encourage you in your faith. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for pressing that like button and subscribing. I'll see you next time. God willing, have a blessed day.